Hello and welcome. If you'd like to join with me on a thought experiment of something that came to mind only a few hours ago. So it's very new. And um, I'm going to have a little thought experiment. You know, what I would do in my head, I guess, but out loud, moving my lips. First of all, consider this. There are two types of people. The delusional and those who are in denial of their delusion. Now the first set are more interesting and original. The second set tend to look to see what others are doing before they act. So, yeah, obviously I'm in the first camp, delusional. You know, you could change the word delusions for beliefs. And as there's probably more and more truth to discover forever and ever, <laughs> right, then you'd expect that whatever belief you got now is delusional. And, you know, the scientists come out with their facts and figures and their ideas and you could probably draw it on a computer and people imagine that in their mind and that's a delusion. Like the Big Bang. So... The thing, the thought experiment that came to mind, because that, that wasn't it, by the way, is this. Now, we're four billion years old. We were created four billion years ago, our souls. And in my mind, I had us living all those four billion years on Earth having started from crustaceans and single cell organisms and having experiences and them getting more and more complicated, animals and stuff, insects, whichever order, um, primates, lower human beings, higher human beings, But what occurred to me earlier, which was kind of partly sparked by... So if you talk about reincarnation, right? Now, so I've, I've been changing my belief on reincarnation quite a bit, okay, over the last few years. So, you know, I'd always had this sort of thing, yeah, probably reincarnated probably had a previous life. I had a couple of dreams that could have been a previous life. And then go on to the AJ Miller thing and like, no, I'm a new soul. You know, I only just been made, like, no wonder I don't know anything. And, you know, so that made sense for a while. That sort of just took the load off. I'm brand new. <laughs> I don't know anything. Why should I know anything? I'm brand new. And then I had this experience where I felt like I was Enoch and whether it was Enoch or not or something else and I've had a vision as well about that, that could have been that life. But there was, a, you know, always in my mind there was this gap. So like, I come into this life from, you know, from having had a rest <laughs> for a few thousand years. So that's one thing. And as if you've watched my last video in the last week or so, I've had quite a eureka moment with the connection to my soulmate. And I've been... Uh, I do feel like it's a sort of a soul union happening. And I'm able to get that feeling. And pain is not coming into my feet. Or not going down to my feet as I was resisting it. I didn't know what the feeling was. 
Um, anyway, at one point, I saw her dressed up different, and it was it was like a first meeting, like in a life. A little flowers in hair, looked like Viking, blonde hair, looked like that. And I was thinking that's weird because I really don't, really wasn't thinking that I'd had a previous life as a Viking. I hadn't been thinking that. I've watched loads of Viking stuff and never had a thought I've had a life as a Viking. Although it's possible. So that's, so that thing, what that led to, the thought was, what about if that life was on one of these other planets? As I've said before, like, I do believe, and share this belief with AJ, that there's several planets littered in the solar system, like Earth, living planets, with God's children experiencing. And I think there may be 14, there may be pairs, but it may be seven, right? And so then the thought occurred to me, well, what about if instead of having had all our lives on Earth, what about if we've been cycling through the planets, almost, you know, like each life you go to the next planet, so like cycle, and you're learning different lessons, and like we're planet number five, justice planet, so then the next one would be number six, peace, the next one would be number seven, goodness, most of you have heard this before, if not there's a video, so go back, um, the, the, the wheel of love and stuff. And each one's got a colour, so justice is light blue. <clears throat> so anyway, so when I thought that, you know, I got a little bit excited. And, you know, a little bit more information was was coming through. So, you know, although I could go back and say, well, okay, maybe it's just because my belief system was different. I'd closed off to having a life sort of in the Viking era or something like that. But... Um, because of those chain of events, um, I think there's something in this. And the other point, what I said about me having believed there'd been a gap, you know, just having a sleep or something with God for 5,000 years, you know, why? <laughs> you know, God's got all these children to get into the point where they're aware of their awareness and da 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 da, learning all the time, learning more and more. Why why have big long gaps, five thousand years? Um, so I'm thinking now it's more constant, and this is like it's almost like getting into one of these delusions because like more, back to that sort of thing, you know. Of, had so many more lives and now I've had lives on six, seven different planets. Like this could be totally different, total different parts of the universe. But it's quite likely that I'm kind of in a in a village, a village of souls. What do you think about that? You know, you're you as a vi a village let's say if all each one of our souls is in the center of the of a galaxy and there's a hundred billion major galaxies we're talking about big galaxies not these little ones that orbit bigger galaxies proper galaxies all have a black hole so then like so my soul is some in one of these galaxies in a black hole that is my universe and so around like the nearest galaxies around me are going to be like my village and, and then one of those galaxies, the galaxies around them, so it'd be like their village. So everybody's village would be slightly different. But those would be the sort of your, your nearest neighbours. So anyway, what am I talking about? So <laughs> it's good. It's, it's like this how thoughts go, isn't it? It's all thinking how, how, how it sort of fits in. Um... So it makes more of this sort of, you know, constantly experiencing living lives. You know, the difficult questions come up like, 
Why would anyone live such a short life as like a couple of years or a few years or, you know, those ones are weird, but you know, maybe we've all had a few lives that were short lived. You know, my life was nearly very short lived, five years. I remember drowning. I was like, gotta die sometime. I really wasn't. I'd had a little panic attack in the sense that it made me sink more. You know, got water in. I don't think I'd breathe water into my lungs, but probably got some sun in and, you know, realised I couldn't breathe in anymore. So it was just like, give up. And I got saved at the same time. I probably said this before. Anyway, so, you know, if I had died at that point, yeah, it would have been sad and I probably would have experienced my parents' loss and brother, you know, people. Anyway, I didn't die. Um, but, you know, these are, there are lots of difficult uh, questions sort of explaining, you know, why, why should someone suffer more than somebody else? And I think that is, um, that is an unknown because, you know, you can see someone who you'd think was suffering, you know, like, you know, you'd think, fuck, if I was like that, I'd, I'd be suffering. But if you actually sometimes look a bit deeper there, they're perhaps they're being compensated in some way, and they're actually, their happiness levels are okay. You know, tough one. You know, so maybe you're a rich man in one life and a poor man in the next life, or, you know, it sort of swings and roundabouts and you don't really know, but you are what you are now, and now is the time to live and stuff, but it's, uh, you know, one day I would hope that we would understand the, the bigger picture of what we are and if we've had previous lives that we could remember them. So, um, I have to keep you posted, I'm possibly tap this, possibly this thought today has opened up a door for me to tap into some of the previous lives because I was blocked before because I was only thinking if I'd had a previous life it would have been on this earth. Now if my last life was on the mercy planet, number four, <coughs> then that's the most recent one so surely that would be the one that I would be to remember more easily or next, you know? And I'm, I know lots of people on the internet love this idea of having come from another planet. You know, so be delusional, but let it be your delusion. And, you know, if it's a delusion you're happy with, stay in it as long as you're happy with it. You know, that's... Seems an obvious thing. Let's keep it on the bat, I suppose. So I'll just briefly mention, like, the last couple of weeks. So I felt I had this breakthrough of feeling my, the other half of my soul is in me. Like so. And then a few days ago I was like, oh, hang on, I thought the one love was in me. How can, shit, how can two things be in me? What have I done wrong? What have I fucked up here? But if we take the analogy of the earth, the hard bit, the oceans, right? And then outside of that, the atmosphere. So if you go from the outer rim of the atmosphere, is a male soul. So all the air in that is in me. And that is all the, su su all the substance is love. So that is the one love contain in the container of me. 
and also the Earth, planet Earth, uh, the, the planet, the female soul, it's also in me. So, so it's about me going deeper. So I can, I can go so deep and feel the one love in me. I can go deeper still and feel my, the other half of my soul, in me. And the, the main thing that's been distracting me is, is uh, my mind has been put in who I know it is, I'm pretty sure I know, uh, in my mind first, but then uh, that's not the way to do it. The way to do it is to go feel in deep and then what it tend to do, tends to happen is I see, I see her. So she, I see her over there sort of thing, but she's in me. And I feel, and then I've been feeling it. So feelings that I've been having, probably struggling with and ending up being sort of sent to pain and, you know, I thought I found, found what it was before and stuff like that. Yeah, but now I, it's much, I think, you know, feel deep into the core that's somebody else. That's my soulmate, and the feelings, they work. They don't go into pain, they sort of go nice, go up. Uh, so, something's working. And it's uh, rekindled my interest in sitting down to meditate. Which is just as well, because God isn't giving me much else to do at the moment. Apart from my son staying with me this week, but that was quite good that I've had the time and I'm around. Yeah. Oh, and it's oh, politics. We are living in historical times. These are, I mean, it's sort of a slow process this Brexit thing but I think it's really significant. Oh well, what about these yellow jackets? <whistles> that was a bit uh, clever of someone wasn't it? A yellow jacket movement and there's all these French are forced by law to have them. Great. I mean it's genius almost. Makes you wonder if it's been planned but you know probably yeah by God. But there's been a concerning thing I heard on the news earlier where someone in a yellow jacket shot a bloke in a Porsche outside of school. He's waiting to pick his son up from school, gets shot in the car. Little kids have got, like, they saw the dead bodies and one little seven-year-old saw it. But, you know, the kid's son, I mean, phew, the bloke's son, I mean. But why was he wearing a yellow jacket? You know, so some people are going to start using this uh, yellow jacket thing to, to go crazy. Oh. It's, so it's concerning, but those leaders, they need to listen up. They need to, they need to listen to the people. Because it's things like this happen when they don't listen. So that's the lesson. The lesson is for them to listen. And then these things won't happen. So like they need to deliver Brexit. They need to deliver a no deal Brexit. Come on, uh, Boris Johnson. All right, so if this vote there's a vote in the UK on Tuesday in a, about six days. If that fails, and this silly amendment doesn't get passed, which will block them from having a no deal, devised by Hillary Benn, I mean, his dad was a good bloke. <clears throat> you know, my gut feeling is that Europe is a bit of an evil empire and it needs to crumble and die. That's, you know, and we've already got the UN. What do we need the EU for? 
Right. If you're into globalisation, we've got the UN. Why the EU? I think a lot of people want to be in the EU out of fear. They want to. They see the world is having problems and think, oh yeah, we'll be better off in the EU, nice and safe in the EU. You know, with our science and our genetically modified food. Fuck the rest of them. That's what I think. So let the EU crumble and out out of the chaos can come some order. And uh I guess we do need perhaps we need some leadership whatever happens. Or just full out anarchy and anarchy doesn't have to be violent. That's not everybody's idea. Anarchy is just without rule. It doesn't have to be violent. If it was if God fearing people, people who knew God and love and everything, <laughs> it could be great. Could be great. Anyway, very interesting times historically, I think. This will be a time that's looked back on. And so back to the thing of this like living life on different planets and this is the justice planet and stuff. But I still think all the planets are having what we're having, you know, we're all going through this sort of phase at the same time. But one thing my little theory will now is starting to point towards, if we're continually existing, continually having lives, maybe short gaps, Maybe little gaps after the life where some things need to be reset. Um, that would mean that at one point, right, there wasn't that many humans, humans on the planet. Now there's seven billion of them now. So again, we've got this line we draw. Where are the where's the line drawn? For what's a child of God, and what is God's spirit? So, so I've sort of said, you know, human. There's this difference between a human and an animal. Yeah, a human can think. A human can sit down and think. Well, I'm thinking, what if I am and I'm not. You know, maybe that's the soul aspect. Maybe the reason the animal doesn't sit down thinking. What am I? I am, I am. Because they already know, because they've got the life force of God. So maybe when we were animals, maybe we acted quite differently to the current animals. Maybe we were wandering around thinking, What am I? <laughs> what was I before I was born? Ah, oh, there's a squirrel! <laughs> Possibly. So where is this line drawn today? Where is the line drawn today? Well, I would come at this from an aspect of God's all loving, right? If God's all loving, then surely any being today that's capable of... I don't know. But, at some point, see, this is the problem I'm having with my little theory at the moment, right? It's my little delusion, that my ever-changing delusion. <laughs> at some point, there must have been, like, that's the thing, right? Now, we souls, this, that competitiveness in men, uh, I can only speak for men, right? Women seem to have a more sort of uh, <clears throat> collective thinking. But I'm sure there's comp competitiveness there too. But anyway, with men, there's certainly competitiveness. And I kind of see this as our role, like we're searchers, uh, searching the truth and stuff like that. So. You know, but the, the, the competitiveness provides a bit of motivation, you know. 
I've seen in my lifetime people that I thought, you know, they're talking about stuff like the mind and, you know, I was younger obviously, but I was looking up and thinking, wow, to have those, <laughs> be thinking about those things, that's so cool. Anyway, so it provides the motivation. So, it would, it would kind of make some sense if, you know, some of the souls uh, had uh, achieved more and more quickly than some of the others. Who does that voice remind me of? <laughs> the crop circle guy. He's cool. Anyway. <laughs> so I got this little theory that, okay, so we're four billion years into our existence. And <clears throat> say at the beginning, you know, after two billion years, some of the souls had been doing what they'd been doing really well, you know, really had things sussed and they were doing it and then some behind and there was some lagging back here. And that's why I had the feeling I was at the bottom. <laughs> I was at the bottom. So here we go, like Messiah Complex again, right? And because, you know, probably it's natural to think like that, but there must have been some time when the first, you know, so the first set of humans, there wasn't seven billion straight away. So some of the souls at the top of the game, the ones who'd been doing things well for the last two billion years, and maybe there's some of the ones who were first were now further back and stuff like that, right? <coughs> so, you know, so those ones, <coughs> must have been slightly ahead in the in the evolution of the soul. Well what am I going on about? Alright, I'll just no, I'll just say it, right? I am using my Body. Okay, I'm using tools like stuff, but this is, you know, other people have expertise in other things, right? Now, for four years, I've been meditating. I'm bloody expert, <laughs> but I've actually been getting something from it. So I'm surprised by that. I never would have thought I would still be interested after doing it for four years at the amount I've been doing as well. Yeah, yeah. And so, all right, I'll put it out there. I consider that I am a, a, a more evolved soul that is getting it, is understanding, you know, the, the rigmarole, the thing that's going on more than anyone else. Not that I've heard everybody else's opinion, so I can't really say, but when I hear about other theories, you know, the things that are popular, the aliens stuff, you know, the universe is full of aliens and they're just ignoring us just to see what we do. Uh, you know, um, the religion, you know, they believe in the holy book and this book is, every single word is God's word. And, you know, so comparing to you know, an A.J. Miller and his beliefs and, you know, Anyone else who's been public, I'm putting out there. That's what I think. Or I'm pretty, you know, pretty, pretty near, near the top. And in a sense, you know, if I look around me at the people I know, they've, what they've spent their time doing, and and some people have had a lot of time thinking. I suppose is you know, people have been to prison and stuff. So, you know, maybe I'm just totally, totally wrong. And, but I, I don't know what they may have been thinking about. I don't, I suppose I'm just rambling now, aren't I? It's time to, uh, time to put a sock in it. <laughs> You've got to blow your own trumpet, I suppose. The word delusion has been coming up because BBC uh, this week have been having programmes about delusions. 
and uh, you know it's a clinical psychiatrist who's doing it so he's he obviously doesn't consider believing in the big bang and everything as any sort of delusion and believing that perhaps you know when you die that's it the end that's he probably considers that's not a delusion but it's interesting on the first one there's this woman who said she was Alice Christ, you know, back in the past, and she was doing this back in the 70s, and I was like, fuck. You know, because I thought in my head, lots of times I was Stephen Christ. And there was a Stephen Christ on uh, YouTube, so I can't even say that it's an uh, original thought of mine, it's just when I was having my little Messiah complex, not that I'm fully out of it, you know, the, like, reading the Bible bit where it says, oh, you'll be known by a new name that's known only to him, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, Stephen. <laughs> but mine's with a PH. That other Stephen Christ in Australia is with a V. God trust Stephen's with a V, you know, like, Stephen's with a PH, they're the ones. Anyway, so, so it's already been done anyway in the 70s, Alice Christ. And as, you know, I've got to say, I do not 100% trust the BBC, that may well have been an actor, that may well have been scripted. But it might have been true. And she did say one good thing in it, you know, when she she felt she had this calling from God to, to do this particular work and she went and talked to a vicar about it and the vicar was going, this is all fantasy, you know, to her. And she didn't believe and she was like, no, what does he know? I know. And she stuck with that and I'm glad. That was good to hear. Good to hear. So... But anyway, I've already done a video saying about how we are all the one and how we all have that feeling that we are the one. And when when you feel God, God makes you feel like that too. You, you know, that's how you feel in the presence of God. And whether some of the things I do uh, are like, you know, um, save the world and stuff, you know, I still, <laughs> it's still a possibility. I haven't completely ruled it out. I mean, I think the timing of my born-again thing and the way the world's changing, we'll have to see it through, of course. But anyway, anyway, whatever it is, I think, you know, we all have our purposes to be ourselves, and that's, that's all I'm going to do. And if that's sort of, you know, admitting that I had a messiah complex, or whether, you know, I could say, well, you know, if there was a chance, I gave it a good go. Um... Yeah, and I'm glad I was open about it and not kept it in because I think that helped that helped me get through it. But I did sort of recognise some quite a lot of the things she was saying, you know, they did sort of stem with me too. <laughs> it, it sort of yeah, you know, to give your life that added purpose. But yeah, why not? I don't know. Perhaps we can all think like that. If it helps. Right, okay, I think that's definitely enough. If you've sat through that, well done. Uh, we'll speak again soon. Bye.